Ice cream in a cone, such a trivial thing, right? Have you ever thought about how ingenious this design was? Tasty and portable, the ice cream cone allows us to walk around freely while enjoying our frozen treat without a spoon. But where do ice cream cones come from? That's actually quite a complicated story. The exact origin of the combination of a cone-shaped edible wafer and ice cream is unclear. Wait a second. Waffle or wafer? What's the difference? Waffle is a flat pastry cooked between two plates, pressed with a grid pattern. When you go to Belgium, you'll find it on every single corner. They call it gaufre, and it is delicious. Whereas wafer is a light, thin, flat cookie. If you are Catholic, you probably have seen something very similar at communions. From the 18th century onwards, there are several cookbooks that mention wafers and ice creams served together. During this period, wafers were considered as stomach settlers and were served at the end of the meal to calm digestion. They eventually became luxurious treats and were an important element of the dessert course. When rolled into funnels or cornucopias, they could be filled with all sorts of fruit pastes, creams and ice puddings. One of the earliest origin stories of the real ice cream cone can date back to 1888. Agnes Marshall, a British celebrity chef who actually patented her own ice cream maker, wrote a cookbook called Mrs. A. P. Marshall's Cookery Book. This book contains a recipe for cornets with cream. In this recipe, Mrs. Marshall creates horn-shaped cookies with whipped cream, but acknowledges that these cornets can also be filled with any cream or water rice or set custards or fruits and served for dinner, luncheon or supper dish. Oh, wait a second, there is an even earlier reference to the cone. In 1807, etching of the Parisian Café Frascati shows something interesting. By the way, this café was also a gambling house that was famous for serving ice cream suppers. People gathered here to eat ice cream, sip liquors, gamble <laughs> and flirt. And if you look closer, no, closer to the lower right corner, what is this? A woman licking something out of a handheld container. Nothing proves that the container was edible, but it already had a cone shape. As ice cream grew in popularity in 19th century London, street vendors began selling it on streets in a variety of cups and containers, including cone-shaped cups called penny licks. These reusable small glasses were designed especially for ice cream. Unfortunately, at that time, people had very little notion of germs. After finishing their ice cream, customers handed back their well-licked cup to the vendor, who either dunked it in some dirty water or gave it a quick wipe before refilling the glass for the next liquor. This unhygienic practice made them the perfect vessels for transmitting disease. After tuberculosis swept the nation, they ditched these reusable cups and eventually banned them in the 1920s, 30s. The solution was an edible container. Some people give the inventor credit to an Italian-American immigrant named Italo Marchioni. Marchioni filed the first edible ice cream container-related patent in 1903. His proposal was for a gadget that would produce edible containers made of dough, which could be filled with ice cream and then eaten once the ice cream had been licked off. Even though these biscuit containers were specifically designed for ice creams, they were still not cone-shaped. One of the most popular cone invention stories locate the origin of the ice cream cones at the 1904 World's Fair. As the legend goes, Ernest Hamby, a Syrian concessioner, was working at the 1904 St. Louis World Fair, selling waffles when an ice cream vendor in a nearby booth ran out of serving dishes. According to the myth, Hamby came up with the perfect solution. He rolled up one of his waffles into a cone shape, let it cool and voila! The perfect ice cream serving dish was born. Sadly, this story was probably made up for marketing purposes. There are many other people credited for inventing the ice cream cone and their stories follow a very similar arc. Typically, an ice cream vendor runs out of cups or had enough of the waste of the disposable paper cups and some crafty person saves the day with a rolled up waffle. Let's have a look at this picture which was taken at the fair. Cornucopias, as they were called at the time, were a huge hit at the fair. And according to notes from participants, a lot of people enjoyed them. So it's really unlikely that Hamby came up with the idea on the spot. But not everyone was happy with the new invention. 
Not long after the fair, a company which had the exclusive right to sell soft drinks and ice creams sued the organizers for $257,000 in damages for contract violations. The records of the court case show that the company complained about whether ice cream cornucopias pertained to an ice cream concession, therefore only the company was allowed to sell them, or were a food because of the edible wafer wrapping the ice cream and pertained to a restaurant or lunch stand concession. Session. Eventually, the company was compensated with $14,000, but court records leave the question unanswered which restaurant or lunch stand concessioner came up with the idea of the ice cream cornucopia. Since Hanby continued to work in the business of ice cream cone production after the fair and eventually opened the Missouri Cone Company, the International Association of Ice Cream Manufacturers named him the official creator of the ice cream cone in the 1950s. Today, it is impossible to know who actually started the cone. What is for certain is that the 1904 World's Fair, even though it wasn't invented there, is the moment the ice cream cone and portable ice cream emerged. After the fair, the popularity of eating ice cream in a cone had companies racing to produce molds and machines to be used for baking ice cream cones. Surging demand for cones quickly outstripped the hand-rolled wafer makers and ice cream in a cone soon became a mass-produced, readily available good. And the rest is history.